I think I can act for everyone, but you can't act for yourself. You do your dharma, things will pay off. Like I want to do stories, and that's what I will do. I love it when I'm on set. I love it when I'm with people. Everything in between, I dislike. Truly, you can tell how a person is when he is at his peak success. How he behaves is what he is. Hello, Vijay Devrakonda. Welcome sir. to Film Companion. <laughs> Absolute pleasure being here. Yeah. So, Tamil cinema, go on the thing. Tamil la pesla ma. Uh, every year, kinga. Ninga finally, inga meet pannung romba santosh ma irku. Ana inek English la pesla. Fantastic. Let's uh-huh. speak in English then. <laughs> How's it been? Your first Tamil film. It's been uh, one of the most pleasurable experience sometimes, and it's been really excruciatingly painful on others. Okay. Uh, so for someone who absolutely didn't know a word of tamil other than uh, uh vaanga ukaranga there was a bingo ad which which went ukaranga vaanga ponga so that was all the tamil i knew to do an entire film and uh, i wanted to do my lines and i can't act for a long time i was resisting doing i've been getting a couple of offers but i was saying no i won't unless because language is my strength um the method i use i need to be in command of everything i don't need to think so i didn't work with how i act but when this one came up i decided to go for it so and i went all out so i took every like when i watch when i'm dubbing and i watch myself i'm like how the hell did you do this i don't think i'm capable of doing it again i don't know if i'll ever do it uh it was yeah it was really hard uh, I, yeah i don't know how i did it i think i was in some z- zone when i did it so when you say method mm. w- can you describe your method no that's a straight secret that's sir. a straight secret yeah i think okay. when i turn 40 45 okay. that's when i'll start giving it out to others to for others, now so. i think i should hold okay. on to it all right okay <laughs> <laughs> so after three big hits okay. you're being called the biggest star of southern cinema mm. okay and it's not just in the telugu speaking states because three of your films have done over a million dollars in the US mm-hmm. and uh, you know in Tamil Nadu uh, the the biggest telugu hit after the bahubali films mm. is geeta govinda okay so it's like a few years back we didn't know mm. yeah. who vijay devrakonda was and now you know it's this yeah. how, how are you processing it all the thing is to me i still uh, I think I'm still ignorant of what actually is happening beyond what I do on an everyday basis. I go to dub, I shoot. The reaction outside, I still I still don't understand it. I don't think I've observed it or paid attention to it to understand it. So to me even till today when I know Nota is releasing, I feel like will people watch this film? Will anyone turn up on the first day to the theater? uh so I'm, to me and it's been so quick from no one knowing you to everyone knowing you that i'm still i think kind of stuck there okay so i still feel like uh, i don't know like i still don't know if if people will come to my so you know usually uh when you give a big success you raise your remuneration i give a big success but i feel guilty of raising the remuneration because i, I feel like uh, maybe they just watch it maybe they won't watch the next one so i shouldn't hike up the cost for the producer and then they watch the next one i'm like maybe i should start quoting a little more people are coming to watch these buggers are making money i'm not making anything but then i'm like one more film becomes a big hit then i'll hike it up and i've been doing this so i keep saying one more film then it's definitely you so i still don't believe i don't know what's happening you don't uh, feel like a star I don't feel like a star like my life is my life is still the same it's changed in some ways actually but uh, of course it's changed yeah of course it's changed but more than my life changing i think it's the world's perception and opinion of you that changes your relation to the world changes more than your own life uh, i still have to fight my battles nothing's become easier every day i loved acting and that's why i decided to become an actor but to be honest acting is 15% of the job 85% is everything else is doing is doing the marketing is helping the director is talking to the producer is is uh, fighting crises is making sure others don't fuck with you there's every day or fighting fighting so many battles and handling people so many people involved that acting becomes such a smaller portion uh, to do and this is when i've kind of started there were days when i began to dislike 
I was like, no man, this is not what I want to do. I came to act. Why? Why the hell do I have to do all this? But I guess it's part of the job. You, know, you do it. But you're enjoying it. I do enjoy. I enjoy the most when I'm on set. Okay. I love it when I'm on set. I love it when I'm with people. Everything in between, I dislike. So do you like promoting films like this in interviews like this? I like some amount of promotion. Like uh, I like having uh, some interviews. I really like. I love meeting large audiences. I don't like going to the shows and uh, you know hard selling. I feel like I don't want to sell the film. I, I know it's the film is a product. You kind of have to draw the audiences in. Some inter some things I like doing. A lot of things I don't like doing. So right now, with the, my success has given me the power to say no to some things. Otherwise, you are obligated to do everything. Like I don't like randomly just. People just ask you to give random bites, talk to thousand people. I'm like. There's only so much I can say, so I want to say the least amount and reach the maximum number of people. So I want to keep that uh, limited because it takes energy, and I can't. And when I when I I feel like when I give you an interview, it needs to be worth your time, my time, and the people who are watching. Right. So I just can't bullshit my way through 30 interviews. I'd rather give one which makes sense and is worth everyone's time than just having my face everywhere. But it's just a, it's a air. You just spoke about how your life has changed. I'm going to read a couple of comments from your Instagram posts. Okay. Okay, so uh. they're mostly from women. Okay. So one of them said, I want to marry you, Vijay. Uh. Love you so much. Uh. Sigur le kuna cheptuna nena. That was one. <laughs> okay. The other one was when you posted a picture during Raksha Bandhan tying a Raghi. Oh, okay. And uh, one woman said, I never wish that day for you. Uh. Uh -huh. Because you are my crush. Love you, baby. Are you enjoying all the sex symbol attention? It's definitely nice. Like while you read it out to me, it's it's nice. It's all it's definitely nice. I don't know. I don't have much more to say. Though. <laughs> you don't want to say? <laughs> no, I don't know what to. What do I? Like, am I supposed to do something with this? With this thing? Does it make you feel better? Did you always? Like, you know, when somebody says such nice things about, you know, the way you look and stuff like that, does that kind of make you feel, you know? That makes me feel, I, I, I love people talking about me, but not to me. So I'm like, you guys talk, but let me not be there. Okay. Because I feel like if you, whenever people compliment me, it doesn't feel natural. I don't think anyone's supposed to be complimented. To, I'm like, is there something, do I need to say thank you now? Or is there something you want what from me? What if I call me? you a good actor, you did a great job in Arjun Reddy. I love people talking to me about my work. Constructive criticism okay. and uh, compliments about my work I like. This I feel like I didn't do anything, it's genetics. So I'm like, okay, but <laughs> all right. And uh, even my work and stuff also, I, if it's like constructive and it's something I can pick, if it's just, oh, this was amazing, this was amazing, I'm like, okay, it's, it's okay, you're expressing your thing. But if there's anything constructive coming from it, anything that sets me thinking and can trigger off something else I can do or give me more ideas, I, I love conversations like that. Any other sort of compliments, I'm like, it's much rather, like, tell it to 10 other people, it's good for me. If you tell me, it's, just, it's, a, it's pointless. So. You just spoke about how the other's perception of you has changed. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, during the audio launch of Yavide Subramaniam, mm. you kind of were still very fresh and new. And one of the things that you said then was, mm. it still feels so surreal that your face is on a poster. And, yeah. and you know, that was like a very, like, yeah. a, like people just said, oh, you're so humble and things yeah. like that. But yeah. during the, the perception kind of changed during the, the pre-release promotions of uh, Arjun Reddy. Mm. When, you know, there were a couple of times where you use swear words mm. and, you know, like you said, bloody something. And then another mm. time you said something like, I don't give a fuck or something mm. like that. Mm. And uh, I think a lot of people are wondering, has Vijay Devarakonda really changed? Or has, like, is this who he is, this outspoken, aggressive person? I think that's, there's been a lot of speculation about that. Yeah. So, I think people's... I think change is constant. If you're not changing, I, I'm changing. I have changed. But what everyone needs to understand is, I haven't changed after every day. How I was at 5 years old, I was not at 10. How I was at 10, I'm not at 15. How I'm at 15, I'm not at 20. How I was at every day, I'm not now. So I've been changing through my life. One more thing is, every time I've spoken, every time I speak, it's how I feel at that moment. I can be truthful to the moment, but I can't promise you that tomorrow I'll feel the same way. 
like today we might be really good friends tomorrow i might hate you gan said that day you were really nice to me that day i liked you i was nice to you today i don't like you i'm not nice to you so i feel it's very open that however i feel on that particular day i speak that way and uh, coming to change i feel one thing i realized is change is not so much about becoming someone else to me change is about unbecoming everything i wasn't to be who who i tru- truly am and uh, i realize the more you're dependent on other people the less you're like yourself because i need a job i need to be nice to my boss and it's only it's survival it's a human instinct to be that i no one's pretending no one's manipulative on like some people overdo it but naturally imagine i need like a good review from you and i know that you hold a lot of influence i think our brain automatically makes us be nice to this person so that you have some amount of goodwill if i have a boss i, I want to get a promotion you are nice to them imagine you don't need this boss then how you behave with them is how to, how you truly are as a person so i feel the lesser needs you have and the lesser you are dependent on others that's how you truly are so when people say uh, if people think i am arrogant or i am really nice right now i think that's how i truly am because with the more success you have the more money you earn the more you can do things on your terms the less you are dependent on people and the more you do whatever however you feel and whatever you feel like so i think truly you can tell how a person is when he's at when he's at its when he's at his peak success how he behaves is what he is any other time he's being that way to get stuff done to reach this position is is my analogy of it i might be wrong but over time of thinking i realized this is this is this is how it is because i realized when i was starting off there were things i would i wouldn't like to do for example i wouldn't understand why a actor was saying dialogue a dialogue this way it was out of character but it's your first film and you can't question a director so you just do it now if i if i think that this is not how it's supposed to be i'll say sir but this character wouldn't say this because of this and then we will not do it so so i am able to say say what i feel or be myself because of this confidence and this thing that you've achieved over time yeah so, th- so i think that's the mistaken as aggression you feel from a from an audience perspective whatever we see we fit in we fit it into our lives so imagine uh, how do i say it yeah we fit it into our understanding of our life maybe sometimes i was aggressive maybe others i was not but to me that was what i felt at that moment and that was how i needed to be if i did anything else i would have given an impression to the audience but i would be pretending to myself i think i can act for everyone but you can't act for yourself like you, you can't act. so i'd rather speak my mind and I've, i'm not too bothered about uh, the public i'm not too bothered about opinions because i think it's only normal for people to have opinions and are you a very philosophical person you know, the way you talk is little i mean it's it's really deep and you know you kind of seem to go through layers of thinking is is that something that you usually do yeah i thought everyone was like this but every time i speak to someone they mention it then i'm like is <laughs> am i being strange you know am strange. i <laughs> am, no, I, no. am i being abnormal <laughs> by being this way but i've just had the tendency to people have told me i overthink i don't know no other way i don't know what it is to think like my brain's always running and i'm always uh, i don't know why i am the way i am but i think the life i saw so many things have played a part right. in me becoming the school i went to the kind of friends i had the teachers i had the books i read the films i watched my my mom my dad everyone shapes you into the person you are so i'm just a result of the external stimuli i have met in life and how i've reacted to it so i became like this uh, you you just spoke about the school you went to and you mm. went to a residential school in puttaparthi yes uh now and then you said that when you came to hyderabad it was a huge cultural shock oh yeah it was what what shocked you exactly in school we were brought up in this really protected environment all i knew was my school my hostel 60 boys who studied with me and you just knew everyone had your back 
and it was so open we we knew no we had no idea of like religion caste surnames we just knew each other and we knew we were all one we were all dressed in white we didn't even know rich poor it was good in some way it was very bad in some way because you're ignorant of the ways of the world if as long as you're there it's fine uh and i could say anything to anyone i could call anyone anything and we all just took it like it was like brothers they still are my f- best friends today but once i came out the dynamics were very different there would be some sort of power play there would be some sort of and suddenly women came into the picture i was in boy school so all these dynamics were very different and then people to feel better about themselves you would see them mocking others and uh, things were taken out it was very it was just strange and then i first time had to travel by a bus to go to college and i had no clue uh, and i was brought up in the school where the air was so fresh because there was not much traffic we were in a little village and suddenly there was pollution and i was stuck in a bus and you you were brought up in so nicely where for everything we would be like sai ram ma'am can i do this sir can i do that so when you are in a bus it gets so jam packed when you realize your stop came i would be like excuse me excuse me excuse me and the stop would the bus would take off and i'm like dude like my stop went off but what do i do now but the thing you have to do is you have to just push your way through and get out if you have to get out but i didn't know this way of the world i was like excuse me can i need to go please can i pass through uh so it took me a lot of time to uh adapt and adjust it took me almost 2 years i also feel like my growing up i was a different i was a person and uh suddenly to adapt to this world i feel we all have the ability to be whoever we want to be uh you just have to choose and you can be i decided to adapt so i feel like in this transition i've developed some kind of a split personality so any situation i'm faced with there is one side of me that thinks from the school like the boy was in school from that angle one side that thinks from the very world and survival of the fittest angle so there's always a clash that's happening so i can be different people at different times so in hyderabad mm. that's when you joined a theater group okay. did that theater is different from how you do films yes but how did that did that help in any way in terms of opening you out like in making you blossom from that boy in puttaparthi to what you ultimately became it definitely contributed uh, in lots of ways it gave me a base to first just act and uh, know what it is to learn lines what it is to hit marks and just perform in front of audiences and you do it in one stretch and rehearsals so i just i just grew into that environment of acting and then once you started performing then you started observing films and reading material like i remember reading some uh, like i would read stanislavski some of it made sense some of it didn't once i did theater for a bit i went back to it and it made like completely different sense then i started doing cinema and i went back to it and i was like oh this oh yeah this so i think as you keep working and if you have the aptitude for it you pick up a lot of stuff theater did i think it was a huge fact i i realized my love for acting also when i started doing theater oh before that you didn't want to become an actor no as in i think i wanted to be an actor like i wanted to be a cricketer okay you know everyone growing up wants to be a cricketer or an actor but we do whatever we have to to pay our rents and bills and right, right. have a decent living it was one confrontation with my dad uh, i was wasting time and uh, my dad it was a time when means were hard uh, to come by and my dad got pissed one day i was just watching cinema watching films at home watching tv he was like why are you wasting my money i was doing my uh, undergrad and uh, he was like don't waste my money i'm working working really hard for this do something you like at least go and work and contribute to the house or the same money do something you want to become a cook i'll pay for hotel management or go there in the village there's farming go go do some farming and make some money at least be useful 
and uh, my dad has a way of saying things which is extremely rude and hurtful so i got really hurt and i was like uh, uh, i want to become an actor join me in like uh, nyfa or something because i knew that we can't afford it like you don't challenge me you are not you can't afford it that's why i'm like this type i threw a challenge what my dad did he took a weeks time and he found like a theater place here it's like if nyf and all we can't afford you go here this is only right for you so that's how i ended up really being physically being in theater and actually doing something towards acting and once i started doing it i started enjoying it for different reasons at different time first i enjoyed the attention i enjoyed the high of you standing on stage and one audience all standing up and cheering for you coming backstage i like the that attention that i got then i started enjoying just being on stage and the process of rehearsals and the people you worked with then slowly i started enjoying acting itself I was like this is what i think i want to do coming to acting in films one of the things we hear about telugu cinema is that it's very difficult for male stars who are not from a star dynasty or lineage to break through to the big time but it takes a lot of struggle mm. what is the situation like really unfortunately once money is become such an important part everything has become a business and once things become a business and the world's not fair there's not we are all born to privilege and it's it's never equal i know my son will be more privileged than i was it's the way of the world there's nothing to complain about it now because it's a business how the dynamics work is a producer is ready to invest money uh once you are a star son you automatically have a certain six segment of audience will come to there's already an interest around right. you so naturally producers will bet on someone they know okay if i put this much money i can get i can i'm assured this amount of money and you also have the support of your family because they have networks they have relations you have favors you do something for my son or do something and then i will do something so it works like that and i think that might be a case because film i think there's a way in politics also you always see yeah. sons coming so it is it is very hard it's very rare for someone from a uh from an from a non family to break like through yeah yeah there have been like a couple before me as like well who there broken have been through. others yeah. yeah so it is it is extremely hard and my dad used to tell me uh, once i started doing theater and said no this is what i want to do i want to be an actor he was like uh, vijay uh it's easier becoming an ias officer than an actor you need to understand this every year around 400 ias officer positions are guaranteed if you work hard 400 people but every year there is one actor that will come and every 5 years one of these five will remain the rest will come and go so the and the competition for becoming an actor is in lakhs so everybody wants to become an actor only. and then he told me these odds and i was like ooh but then somehow i think that i was always in the phase of like i wouldn't care i was in this very i had this very reckless thing like who will stop me let's see like if i have talent and i can do it and if i can create a need for someone like me there should be a market there it was just an attitudes like multiple things contribute I, even i don't know how exactly it happened or why it happened why it happened to me i'm sure there are others more talented uh than me there might be others who are much more good looking than me i think it's just a weird combination of factors and my attitude all worked and somehow i'm here i have no idea why sometimes i feel it was all my doing sometimes i feel i feel like maybe there's a purpose for me to do you believe in destiny and something like this that was exactly going to be my next, next question, question huh? yeah <laughs> because i was going to ask if you believe in uh-huh. destiny because the arjun reddy script hmm. uh, was with other people for a long time mm-hmm. and you know they weren't committing to the script yeah. and uh, then the director kind of you know said he'd had enough of waiting and yeah. then he approached you did did you kind of did you pick that script because you know i finished the movie i need to go to the next movie so i need something to work on or did you feel it from the gut that there was something in this that i that that's that's i know that this this is going to be it did you feel that there was an element of destiny in it it's kind of before arjun reddy what we should talk about is even pelli chupulu went through a similar thing it went to a whole bunch of actors no one was willing to take it up they wanted changes 
Tarun came to me and he and he only came to me because every day subramaniam release and i was like okay there's this talented guy why do i need to go around these stars i'll go to him he came to me and i wanted to work with tarun i watched his shots i did it even sandeep watched every day and wanted to work with me but he was like he's so young and people don't know him i might not have a budget i can't afford a budget to make this film with him but then he was also getting rejected and stuff and then he pitched the script to me it was not a decision of i need to go on to one more film because i signed the film i did one more film. he had to wait for me to come on to his set because i had already was doing another film called dwaraka uh but when i heard the script i wanted to do it that was a film i knew i wanted to do i was like we are doing this irrespective of what it takes you wait i'm coming 100% so i just that story i connected i loved it it was so real it felt very real to me when he was telling me some scripts when people tell me i immediately see the film i see the character i see what posture he'll stand i can see his behavior uh so i could see that and those are scripts i really get excited about so this was one of them do i believe in destiny i'm not sure but maybe it plays i'm not sure do you believe it i wanted to know you you're like the more i i i more. i believe in something called being at the right place at the right, right time, time I, right? i i i don't know many people you some people call it luck some people call it destiny but huh. i genuinely believe that there's something called i mean you can be very talented or whatever it is but sometimes you just need that opportunity and everything else to mm. be there so i'll tell you another time about how my so my dad used to a lot of times tell me that uh, the only reason me and your mom met me and your mom are married to give birth to you or your brother we don't know who but one of this and then one day my mom was like that's so mean to say something like this <laughs> and then one day he sat me down and he and my mom told me how they met if you listen to the story of how exactly they met and got married it is such a sequence of strange events and then i was like oh shit and uh, looking at my brother is it you or is it me who is here for some purpose so i don't know like some things when you hear they're so strange there's such a sequence of strange events that happen that you're like i didn't have the power to do all this these are all such external factors that contributed to you being here so sometimes i find that strange but uh, i believe that it completely has to be you you have to make things happen right. and for example for pelichupulu to happen i happened to read a book called uh, rebel without a crew uh, by robert rodriguez the only reason pelichupulu happened was me reading that book someone gifted me that book uh, an ad called abhinav i'm so grateful to him he just gave me that book saying it's a good book read i read it and i read about how this guy like gave his body for medical tests to raise some small money to make a film into $2000 and it went on to become so huge that hollywood produced it and i was like he's doing so much why can't you make this happen and then i was like i'm going to make this film happen irrespective and then we moved so many pieces on the board like we brought in people small money i said we don't you don't work for money you don't we don't work for money we did like shit loads of things just to make the film that film i feel was like completely our doing like me tarun the team and then the producers coming on board we made it we made the thing happen so it it happened because of that that book that i read so i feel a lot of things you have to you have to do to you have to make it happen let's talk about nota is uh, but before that i just want to know mm. uh, you obviously know the telugu industry and now you have had an experience of the tamil industry mm. is there any difference in let's say the style or the presentation or the style of acting or anything like that uh i cannot comment on industries as whole because even in telugu each film i have done are very unique and i have no idea about the tamil industry other than the film i have done so yeah. i cannot generalize it but the what i really liked about nota set in specifically was it was super smooth it was planned so well but i give a lot of credit for that to anand shankar and right. santa right. the cameraman they both were working like the machinery was so smooth so the understanding was so quick it was one of the fastest sets i wouldn't have time and i was also because it was a language i didn't know i had spent one month prepping for it that i knew my entire dialogue scene exactly what i was doing by heart so i had 
they would set up i would come we would roll we would be done i would just go to prep for the next scene and then i would like vijay ready in 5 minutes i would barely get time to sit i would come do it so it moves so quickly and so efficiently that's one thing i loved about no time that's why i have two releases so quickly because one film took so long and suddenly one film is done really quickly uh so it moved really quick that's one thing i i liked about this uh the style of acting wherever i go i will i will do Your my style <laughs> i will do my style of acting so uh i was working with superb actors like nazar sir and satyaraj sir right uh they were the, the nazar sir brilliant in the film like when you watch it what is done uh on lots of scenes where i am not there i was just watching it and dubbing and i like this man just killed it and satyaraj sir and me shared a lot of scenes uh so the style of acting there is i basically like to play it very real even the slightest thing that feels unreal just affects me like i freeze if a dialogue feels unreal i need to find a way to make it seem real till then shooting is a stall like there was one scene in arjun reddy where i didn't understand i was like what is he saying and we had to stall for like few hours for the director to explain to me that it's a real feeling people can have this once i felt like oh it's real then i could do it till then i couldn't so even in nota there was one bit which i felt was like too filmy and then i'm like anand we can't do this and then he rewrote it for it to feel real to me and uh, then i could do it so the performance i like and the how i work is it needs to feel real to me it needs to be like this guy if a guy like this is there this will happen to him and this is how he'll behave this is how he'll speak these are uh, these are how even if the blocking is unreal it disturbs me uh so even the blocking needs to feel that those are the sets i'm happy right sometimes you don't always work on sets that even the blocking sometimes you know there are these films where everyone standing in a line because there are 10 actors and you're all <laughs> talking and i just feel odd something it just uh, messes with my system so i need it to be really fluid and real so i was going to ask you this question later mm-hmm. but let me ask you now uh you you become some kind of flag bearer for a certain kind of new telugu cinema thanks to the fact that pelu chupulu happened and then arjun reddy happened mm. and then you know mm. now one of the the and after geetha govindam your the family audience has also kind of accepted mm. you and you've kind of grown i mean each movie has got you bigger and bigger mm. now the next logical step one would assume mm. is to kind of do a kind of mass action movie mm. because that's the kind of telugu film that really or even in tamil that's the kind of film that really goes and reaches everyone mm. right that's like traditional model mm. would you a do some I mean would you do you plan to do something like that a and b in such a movie would you still be considering this it feels real question when it comes to acting any film i do will be real has to be real there's no other way around it uh even if it's some big mass commercial action film that i end up doing it has to be extremely real otherwise i will not it will not go to sets this is one thing for sure uh now was it the natural step for me it was about telling stories i don't even know the numbers geeta goindam did other than the numbers i know that it hit 50 it hit 100 the rest of the details i don't know some uh, my producers would give me updates i like dude i don't understand this stuff i don't know the reference point and uh, the issue that happens with because we are talking about nota the issue that happens with politicians and actors when you are fighting to be when you are fighting for your place when you are fighting to be on top all your energy goes into this fight you will never end up doing any work if you are fighting to be the cm oh shashikala is coming oh this person is coming eps is coming ops is coming there's if you are just in this power struggle you'll never do service to your constituency or your state you're always trying to ensure you're here even as an actor if you're fighting for now i'm this big star i need to remain this whatever you do will be to fight for this position you'll never do any work i think that day you're like screw all this i just even if i remain in this constituency i might not become the chief minister you'll at least do good stuff for the constituency so i think i don't want to struggle for it will go if it i will do my work uh, my director my evade subramaniam director was telling me you do your dharma things will pay off 
so i like i want to do stories and that's what i will do if it does small money big money what money i don't know but i think that's the only way i'll be able to enjoy doing what i'm doing and not be in this struggle of this stuff so i don't even want to know what numbers unfortunately we are in a world where everything reaches you good and bad right. but ideally i would like to stay in one cocoon and just do these films and so that's how like if you see my lineup of films henceforth also they're all uh, they're all very strange and even i don't know how what will work i just like those stories and uh, i will tell them what is your favorite tamil film i can't tell you my favorite but there were a whole bunch of films that i that i started watching once i started doing theater uh, so i used to love sakhi in telugu it was called alai pai de yeah. uh, i loved adukulam i loved uh, karthi's first film uh, parthi veeran ah uh, parthi veeran uh, i really enjoyed danus vip 1 uh, velaila pattadari i thought uh, this is if it a commercial film this is the film like i right. want to do i really enjoyed that uh, as a kid i remember watching lots of rajini sir's uh, rajini sir's tamil films dubbed into telugu that would be that felt like cinema now it, nothing feels like cinema to me i think after becoming an actor then it just felt like another world you just be transported now once you become an actor it kind of kills that larger than life feeling of being transported elsewhere i remember watching a lot of rajini sir's work so mostly i watched danush karthi's and i watched couple of vijay sethupathi's work like sudu kavum and uh, uh the thing where he keeps forgetting uh, yeah. uh so i watched and all these were really really good work and we would always be under the impression that tamil cinema is doing lots of new interesting stuff but once i came here people were like here everyone is doing this mass commercial films you guys are only doing i'm like <laughs> maybe it's about the grass is greener yeah, on the other yeah, side yeah. <laughs> feeling yeah uh yeah so these were some of the films i watched yeah. uh, i watched lots of surya sir's films all these films usually would get dubbed into In telugu yeah, yeah. so i would watch these there has been some controversy about the release date of nota mm. uh it's opening close to ntr juniors uh, arvinda sameetha veera raghava mm. and when the news kind of came out a lot of his fans uh kind of started trolling you and saying things like how dare you release your film mm. uh, you know around our heroes now is this just some crazy fan talk or is it like a like is it some kind of unwritten rule that in telugu cinema you don't try to release a film alongside the film of a very established or senior heroes that's something the thing is uh common sense wise releasing it with a big star fx my film on right like the kind of scale like my budgets and ntr budgets are into 10 his budgets the scale of his films the scale of audience he pulls in uh just on his name irrespective of the film being good or bad the numbers they do or how much people anticipate a film like his is something else right. so common sense wise i shouldn't for my own good release on the same date but i don't like being told that you should not release i have the common sense to not release it uh this trolling and all first thing is if a film does what i realized is there is a population of around uh, ap and telangana together have a population close to 9 crores and uh, if a film is doing a 100 crore business that means around 1 crore 20 lakh people are watching the film out of this around 20 lakh are watching it twice maybe so around 1 crore people are watching the film so 8 crores are not even seeing this film <laughs> so there is huge amount of audience that we still have to pull in it's not like if i come they won't watch that film or they will watch my film i think that's wrong but also there's a limited number of theaters so there are lots of dynamics i ideally wanted the film to come on a holiday so i thought uh, 10th from 10th holidays are starting and 18th is another day but for various reasons we couldn't come on those particular days and uh, and uh, 
so i decided like let's ask the audience itself when do you want us to come why all this i don't understand these because i'm so new to this and i don't have the aptitude for these numbers and stuff as much they were telling me theaters this no this industry this that this that uh, i was like dude i don't understand let's just, uh, let's run a poll <laughs> this this i can understand i saw 35% that so like, that was your idea yeah i was like no i'm running a poll we'll see what what people say we'll figure it out but i would never come on the same day that uh, tarak bhai was coming uh, i won't get theaters first of all because i have such a massive yeah. release you won't find theaters to release it so there are lots of logistics to consider lots of feelings to consider lots of is this film right the genres of films to come but it's always good for a film to come in a holiday because more people will turn up to watch the film they are not occupied by i just didn't want to come during exams any day doesn't matter to me other than exams because i know that the young crowd are the crowd that turns up for my films a lot so i want them to be able to come to a film i don't want them to bunk their exams and stuff and come i want them to freely come and be able to experience it that was my only concern but i was like if it's fifth it's fifth the audience will take take it from their beat holiday or what uh, they will take care of it don't know yeah we, we just spoke about how geeta gondam was accepted by the family audience and mm. you also spoke about how you are not going to say no to a certain film because of just market considerations you're going to you want to tell stories yeah but do you think the fact that you have reached a larger audience might prevent you or make you think twice about doing an edgy sexually charged violent film like arjun reddy again oh no i will definitely do arjun reddy again like if a film like that comes and i like the script and stuff i, I will do it i don't even think i'll think about now i am this way i don't know I think I just know when I listen to a story I know if I if I'll do it or not and how I feel at that moment at that point in life like there might be some stories that I listen to now that one year later I will not feel like doing as right. much so and lots of people come and are ready to tell me stories and wait for t- like right now I have stories I have I have commitments that go into 2020 but my fear is by the time i reach that i change as a person what if i come to that day and feel like i don't want to do this film so i try and explain that to people that saying right now i might love your script and i have the complete intention of doing it but what if when it comes to that i don't feel like doing you would have wasted your time i would be half heartedly doing it it's really complex but people are so excited to work uh, with some sort of energy and stuff they're like no we'll wait type thing so right now i have commitments that i have to kind of fulfill but uh, my right now my complete objective is to cut down on work as much as possible because i feel like i'm on overdrive uh, and i need i realize that i need the space and breather uh, to just to just be fresh to just remain fresh finally i just wanted to ask you at this stage when you're do you worry that the law of averages would catch up with you yeah as in i know failure is around the corner and uh, i know when it happens it will shake me up for a few days but i know i will rise from it uh, i know it won't deter me i know it's just a matter of few days and also every now every once in a while a good slap in your face is it's like a good reality check i think it will trigger you to work double hard or it's how you react to that failure it will depend if i react to it badly i'll just go downward from there if it uh, triggers me to work harder and pushes me i will i might do more new exciting stuff let's see when this law of averages will catch up <laughs> i hope it never does on that note thank you so much for your time absolute hope, pleasure sir i hope nota does very well and all the best for the future i really look forward to your review <laughs> after nota okay. it's my first tamil film and you being a tamilian and and i like i really liked uh, i like i really like the script when i heard it that's why even though i heard a bunch of tamil films this was the first film i jumped on to doing and it was stepping out of my comfort zone 
and i think stepping out is where i learn the most and it actually when you step out of your comfort zone and pull it off the amount of confidence it gives you is immense uh so i'm really curious about what you have to say uh, about nota i'll be watching i'll watch it yeah, yeah. i'll be watching your review oh, be watching. that's a lot of pressure <laughs> it's a pressure on both of us now yeah. okay. thank you so much thank you so thanks. much sir